Now, typically when I do a review on a movie or TV show, something like that, I normally get into like the cast and the storyline and the soundtrack and my top five moments, let you know when there's going to be uh, spoilers ahead and give you my thoughts. But today we're going to do a little differently. I don't feel like we need to get into the cast and the storyline and the soundtrack for Castlevania because it's already in the fourth season. Most of you guys know what Castlevania is. So I don't really have to get into that. So today we're just going to do my top five moments from Castlevania season four and I'm going to give you my thoughts. And yes, if you haven't watched the fourth season and you want to, this is not the video for you yet. Go ahead watch castlevania season four and then come back and then see if my top five moments are your top five moments so without further ado my top five moments spoilers ahead well i guess that's what that's for at number five i had the argument between varney and Racco. Now, Varney's trying to tell Racco, oh, I know you used to do this and you used to do that when you was, you know, a human before you became a vampire. And Racco, he's not trying to deny anything. He's like, yeah, I did it because that's how war is won. You know, and this goes on a rant, how he's saying war is won when you decimate your opponent to the point where they can't fight no more. It's not won on the battlefield. And war is won when you sneak in the enemy camp and you slit everybody's throat. War is one when you go into a village and you kill all the babies. And he's right. It's heinous. It's horrible. That's how you win wars. I mean, as Americans, we kind of did the same thing. Well, our government did. We went to war with Japan. Japan was not going to quit. We dropped two hydrogen and bombs on them and killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of civilians. It was horrible. It was heinous. It was irreparable. And we won. So he has a point. That is at number five. So at number four, I had to fight um, between uh, Alucard, Belmont, Sika versus, I guess they call this dude the dragon. He's a really big old vampire. Now, before they get to that guy, they're fighting like their individual fights, and the fights are really good. I mean, they're having to pull out all the stops just to get past the little individual fights and then they get to this big old vampire and this dude is giving them the business i mean he's putting in some work on them i mean alucard even though he's like half human half vampire he comes from the strongest vampire there is so alucard's no slouch and this dude is just, just putting in work on all three of them i mean belmont hits him with his whip and typically when he hits a vampire with the rose whip you know uh whatever he hits him with starts to explode so before <laughs> his arm is about to explode he rips it off and then throws it at belmont i mean this dude is just a beast i mean he's a tank of a vampire and it took all three of them to take this dude down and it was a really good fight and that's my number four moment So at number three, I had to fight between Isaac and Camilla. Now, I like both of these characters. I really do. I really like Camilla. I mean, she's driven and she's focused and she knows exactly what she wants. So Isaac wants to get revenge because Camilla double crossed Dracula. It's understandable. So they get into this fight. Now, she's killing night creatures left and right. Camilla is a beast. Don't, don't, don't get that twisted. Camilla is an absolute beast. And... The way Isaac uses his night creatures is different from the other guy. Like he uses night creatures when he fights with them. And Camilla's killing so many night creatures that this big huge room is filled with blood on the floor. There's number of blood on the floor. It's almost like it's like a lake of blood. And um as they're fighting, uh he's using the night creatures in like coordinated efforts and you know, um he's fighting along with him too using his using his blade and when Camilla's about to strike him when the night creatures gets in the way and sacrifice themselves and they help him with their with his attacks and so on and so forth. So it gets to the point to where even though Camilla's taking out these night creatures left and right, she gets injured pretty bad and there's just too many of them. 
so she realizes that so before she before she's about to die she says one of the most gangsterous things i've ever heard in life she realizes she's gonna die and she goes you know what you're gonna go to hell one day I'm going to be down there waiting with a very sharp stick and the determination to see if you can die twice. Gangster boy. I mean, gangster. And then she stabs herself and she blows up and it, it was gangster. It was gangster. What can I say? It was, it was gangster. It would have been number one, but there's other scenes that are just a tad bit better. Not much better. It's a little bit better. That's a number three. So at number two, I had the fight between Trevor Belmont and Death. Now, Varney, like I said before, isn't who he says he is. He's actually Death himself. He was just posing as a low-level vampire. He also posed as the being that was helping Saint Germain in the Infinite Corridor. So he's orchestrated all this stuff. And he finally reveals himself. And he wants to bring back Dracula because that's one person that can bring the most death to the world. And so he can feed because he's like he feeds off of death just like any other vampire feeds off of blood so um uh, trevor belmont knows who this creature is he gets alucard and his girl out of there and he's like you know what and he does a little speech you know you know we're two old killers and we need to get the hell out of here and so on and so forth and that's like you're gonna take me out okay so they get to scrapping and it's going exactly how you think it's going to because you're fighting death the entity and uh you know trevor belmont's landing blows but death hits him with one blow breaks his arm hits him with another blow i mean he's pretty much taking him out but um belmont you know and death's like he even saying oh you're not going to get up and uh belmont uses rose whipping creates like this firestorm and then throughout season four he's been collecting these items he knows what they are nobody else really knows what they are he's been collecting them and now he's going to use them. He puts all these items that he's been collecting together and creates this weapon and he uses it to take out death. And it looked like uh, he died too in the process, but we'll talk about that in the next scene here. But that is my number two moment. So at number one, I have really two moments. So after the fight with death, you're thinking, Trevor Belmont's dead. You know, it's been two weeks. He's dead. You know, uh, Sika is like, you know, trying to get out of her stupor of losing Trevor. And, um, you know, everything's pretty much in, uh, you know, um, Alucard and his new girl now. They're trying to tell Sika to stay and help out here and build a community right here and so on and so forth. And then you see this horse bringing in this guy got his hood on and everything else and Alucard's like I know that horse and then they go over and it's Trevor and he explains how right before I guess he was about to die um, Saint Germain opened up the infinite corridor he went through it and he landed somewhere else in Europe and he had to make his way back to them and he did and plus he's all beat up from the fight because you know death put it on him and then there's a scene where they show how Dracula and his wife got reincarnated. And, you know, they're, you know, they're going to an inn and, you know, the big book in the room and they're saying, you know, we got to, we had to steal these clothes, but, you know, we're going to have to do something to return them. And you can see like Dracula's not, wasn't a bad person, you know, and his wife really made him, really helped him be not a bad person. They're not bad people just that you know the church killed his wife and you know he wasn't going to have that so it's good to see that now dracula and his wife's back trevor belmont's still there and hopefully we're going to get a season five i mean you should already know my thoughts on castlevania i mean i love castlevania i feel like it's probably tied with seven deadly sins as being the best animes on netflix i mean love the storyline that they always have they always have good dialogue i mean the action's fantastic love castlevania especially since you know i'm 40 so i used to play castlevania on a regular nintendo and that was one of my favorite games ever love playing castlevania 
So and the show doesn't disappoint at all. It's a fantastic show. They have it set up to where they can do, um, you know, season five, season six, season seven. Hopefully they just keep this thing going. But like I said in the beginning, those are my top five moments. Do you agree with my top five moments? Or if you don't agree, what are your top five moments in Castlevania season four? And saying that, if you are new here to SEM, please hit the subscribe button and become part of this SEM Nation. Once you come part of this nation, that bell notification, you know when the video comes out. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. My name is Dorian. This is SEM. Thank you guys for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. And you guys have a good day. Thank you.